Nvidia stirred up the graphics card market this summer with the debut of its GeForce RTX Super family of graphics cards that increase performance at existing price points in a bid to preempt AMD's Radeon RX 5700 series Navi graphics cards. The first two of three RTX Super Series SKUs are the RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 2070 Super. Nvidia displaced the RTX 2070 from its $499 price point with the veteran-doubt RTX 2070 Super as AMD beat the RTX 2070 at $399. The most interesting aspect about the RTX 2070 Super is that it's based on the 13.6 billion transistor TU-104 silicon since NVIDIA had maxed out the TU-106 with the original RTX 2070. The TU-104 is at the heart of the much pricier RTX 2080 and upcoming RTX 2080 Super graphics cards. What this means to consumers is that most custom design add-in card AIC, partners would rather reuse their existing RTX 2080 board designs with a little cost cutting on the VRM instead of spending money on developing and validating new PCBs. Another benefit is partners using heavy cooling solutions that were originally designed to handle the much hotter RTX 2080, and perhaps even the RTX 2080T. Nvidia carved the RTX 2070 Super out of the TU-104 silicon by disabling an entire GPC worth of CUDA cores, leaving the chip with 2560 out of its 3072 CUDA cores enabled, besides 160 TMUs, 64 ROPs, 320 Tensor cores, and 40 RT cores. The memory subsystem is untouched. 8 GB of memory ticks at 14 Gbps and sits across a 256-bit wide GDDR6 memory interface, churning out 448 GB per second of memory bandwidth. The GPU clock speeds are increased, too, with up to 1770 MHz GPU boost frequency, compared to 1620 MHz on the original RDX 2070. Another neat little perk of being based on the TU-104 silicon is NVLink support, which enables two-way SLI. In this review, we have with us the MSI GeForce RTX 2070 Super Gaming X. This is MSI's second kind of Gaming X product based on the RTX 2070 Super, the other being the Gaming X Trio, which we reviewed here. The card uses a slightly more compact twin Frosier 7 cooling solution that comes with two large fans, as opposed to three fans on the Gaming X Trio. The underlying PCB is also a bit more compact, but uses the same 8 plus 2 VRM configuration. The card comes with the same exact factory overclock and power limits as the Gaming X Trio, with 1800 MHz maximum GPU boost, and an untouched 14 Gbps GDDR6 memory. You get essentials such as idle fan stop, and a ton of RGB LED embellishments. MSI plans to sell the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X at a price of $510, a mere $10 premium over the $499 NVIDIA baseline price. The big difference MSI has here with the new RTX 2070 Super Gaming X is that it drops the word Trio from its name, which indicated a triple fan cooler instead replacing it with a smaller dual fan cooler. We still have the same TU-104 GPU and 8GB GDDR6 memory, but MSI is only charging $10 more than NVIDIA does for its RTX 2070 Super Founders Edition.
MSI is selling the new GE Force RDX 2070 Super Gaming X for $510, which is a damn good deal considering you get all of the performance the RDX 2070 Super has to offer but with far improved thermals over the Fay version of the card. What makes the RTX 2070 Super so special is that instead of using the TU-106, NVIDIA uses the TU-104 which is the same GPU used in the higher-end RTX 2080. This means MSI, and other ABES, can use existing RTX 2080 board designs, do some adjustments, and pump out the RTX 2070 Super Click. Better yet, the RDX 2080 uses higher-end cooling which means the TU-104-based RDX 2070 Super retains this higher-end cooling. Awesome! Read more. www.tweaktone.com web link.